All right. Oh, and we are live. The last word with Lord Cognito and Ibantis special Saturday Campfire Edition returning. How you doing, sir? Uh, doing good. Been busy. Uh, just tried to make this thing with a little work thing I had. Uh, but we have an awesome guest tonight. Fair warning for everybody. This could be a mature show this evening. It's a Saturday night campfire special. So, you know, the gloves are off tonight. So <laughs> we're going to chat it up this evening. But, sir, let's welcome our fantastical guest here. It's yours. Let's, now let's bring him in right. Welcome to The Last Word, episode number 139. And it's another glorious Saturday <laughs> here in the States. And we're back in front of the Destiny Campfire for some more looter shooter discussion. I'm extremely excited about our special guest. So we're going to get right into it. I want to introduce a Lord who is not only one of the absolute pillars within our Destiny Law community with his weekly Lord videos, but also had the amazing distinction of being immortalized by Bungie in regards to our sacred grimoire. Introducing the creator and host of the Mylin Games YouTube and Twitch channels, co-host of the Destiny Down Under podcast, and lore curator of the Destiny Grimoire Anthology Volume 1, our favorite complaining hunter boy, <laughs> who is by far the most hilarious streamer of Halo for the first time. <laughs> Live from Australia and kind enough to make his debut at the campfire of the last word. My man, Lord Mylan Games. How you doing, sir? I like how I think every Australian should get a just a language warning. Or maybe you don't even <laughs> need the language warning. You just go, look, guys, we've got an Aussie on. Uh, okay, it's a different set of rule sets. <laughs> Yeah, the normal but words you hear, under. those won't be there. You'll hear some new ones tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks for having me on. Sorry, my my alarm went off in the middle of the intro to make sure I was here. Yeah, and that make was sure cool. I was out, out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say you satisfied all of those requests. You did well. Yes, yes, you <laughs> yes, did well. I like yes. that. I like that, brother. Praise appreciate she's taking the time, man. I know we've been scheduling this for a while. Fresh off a wedding, you know what I'm saying? Not that yes, long congratulations, ago. man. That's congratulations, man. Congratulations. Appreciate you. Yeah, Thank appreciate you. you making the time, man. But you could, you could get started on them with, with, with some questioning. Yeah, no. I mean, for me, it just kind of goes back, like, for your gaming journey, just like the ones that you hit off for us, just there are some big ones. But um, when it comes to shooters, you go all the back, all the way back to, like, N64 and GoldenEye. That's one. I mean, were you, I got to ask, like, you and your friends, or would they be like mates? Again, I'll probably get the words all wrong. Like, was that a big couch co-op one for you as well? Is that kind of where it started for shooters? Or did anything else like hit bigger than GoldenEye for a shooter? Uh, GoldenEye was definitely the first shooter. It's sort of funny because because I've got gravitated to law. I'm probably quite far away from PvP, but most of like my gaming preference is always actually PvP or at least... Mm couch co-op and then and then moving from there so it's sort of it's sort of funny how it ended up in law because people are like oh, i don't care about versing each other just tell me a story <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah um and it's funny because my i have a twin brother and you know we, we had to obviously share the console and he he would um be in legend of zelda and i'll mm. be like let's play 007 and it was just so opposite and we had to share the Nintendo, and I'm like, dude, Zelda's. I mean, uh, see, once again, all my audience probably love Zelda <laughs> as a like, story and law. But I'm like, man, I just want to play some 007. I want to get some cheat codes. I want to speed run some <laughs> missions. Um, I want to be odd job. Come on, just one time. Odd yeah, job. so a lot of a lot of four player split screen with with uh, with mm. some mates. Um, odd. I, I don't know if you've played 007 recently, but Probably don't. Just let nostalgia. Let it let it stay. Yeah. Yes. Some, let it some stay in the memories of something that was actually good. Some <laughs> things don't age well. And like the N64, yeah. like early 3D graphics. Like you can you can take Mario 64 for kind of what it is, but yeah, some of that stuff doesn't age all too well. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Shooters with shooters with a single stick uh, is uh interesting experience. <laughs> I yeah. totally forgot about the control totally forgot style about on that. those. That's before the dual analog error and the yeah. Yeah, yeah you're just <laughs> literally strafing. You're just literally yeah. strafing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the frames. Oh, oh, someone in chat said perfect dark too. That was that that was changing as well. I went mm -hmm. straight into perfect dark after Golden Eye after many years of that. Nice. A little mm -hmm. bit of Mario Kart. Are you 64 excited as well. about the I guess new one apparently? 
Yeah, uh, I haven't. I remember seeing a little bit. I mean, like, but I don't think they really showed much. No, I remember seeing a, a, a bit about it, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool!" Like, I'll be, I'll be checking that out. But I can't mm. remember much more. It's than that. like the quadruple A or whatever Microsoft wants to call that. It's mm. like their big studios behind Perfect Dark. I was very intrigued that that was mm. that title. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, tremendous gaming history. Another thing that I got to ask you about is that uh, obviously. You've been recently getting back into getting into Halo with fresh eyes, from what oh, I understand man. it. So, how did that start? Was it like someone pressured you, like, "Yo, you are a Destiny guy. You need to play this." Like, how did this whole thing? Because I watched you in a Warthog try to cross over some sections in, a, in one of those cha- uh, Halo oh, CE, <laughs> and I literally lost it. You were hilarious, brother. The, the videos that he does is classic. So, how did that start? Um, I actually think. Look, I. I'm pretty highly critical of any content I make, and I guess um, more recently, oh, starting. Oh, I guess it started when when COVID started last year, actually. Um, just thinking about wanting when I finished my PhD, wanting to transition into content creation full time, and what that would involve, and not being so niche because you know Destiny's not going to live forever, um, and it, you know the law. I am in a pretty good section in Destiny. A lot of people. Yeah might not play the game but would still listen to, to oh, yeah. stories and, and, and lore. So for sure. Um but really just trying to diversify. And I pretty sure it was just a trailer. I think it was the Halo Infinite trailer. We were just goofing around mm-hmm. beginning of a stream. Um I, I didn't have any plan for the stream that day and I made a joke. I said, oh I've never played Halo before. And then mm-hmm. that was sort of the entire chat. <laughs> play Halo, I can't <laughs> play it. What? And I was like and I was sort of I I, I that's a bit of a lie. I had played Halo. Uh, okay. The kid up the road had an Xbox, but mm-hmm. I've ne- I never played the campaign. We only ever played uh, multiplayer. Well, multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I only had memories of that, and it was only at a, at a friend's place. I never had, had one myself. So I was like, oh, why not? Everyone seems to be losing their mind, and I'll give it a crack. And uh, <laughs> it gave me a new perspective on Bungie, really. And I, and I mm. sort of I didn't understand that where the hype from destiny came from mm-hmm. and the legacy of bungie uh, and i almost like yeah halo's it probably more in a box of it changed my life than destiny is just Ooh, because wow man i think it's a masterpiece i honestly do i think it's one of the best games ever made and that was yeah. like and the fact that i can play it two decades later and still f- and feel that way about a game is pretty special so you know mm-hmm. i I'm still waiting for the next high of stre- like the next game that gives me that same feeling <laughs> on I stream. You. And I, I don't you. know if it will because it was this perfect storm of mm-hmm. my audience being, you know, Halo fans, me somehow never playing Halo and mm. having nothing already spoiled and and just Lucky. being this perfect mesh. And it was and it was also lockdown and people stuck at home. So yeah. it was this perfect like mm. sort of escape to nostalgia. <laughs> Which was just really, I mean, it was really, really fun. Um, so I've actually finished the first highlight series, which I think is some of my best content. It doesn't perform very so. well because uh, no one's really <laughs> searching for Halo. <laughs> no one's searching for Halo right now. I mean, that's like the no. whole YouTube algorithm, but sometimes you got to make a video you want to make, and that's part of content for sure. So it's like mm-hmm. if you enjoyed it and you had that, like, you know, existential of an experience from it. It's worth it. Whether in like five, you know, whether five other people see that and end up playing it through Halo because they missed it as well. That's sometimes like the good ones mm-hmm. that get out there. Cause some of the comments yeah. you'll probably see on that one might be a little more special than like the average Destiny one because it's so different. So. Yeah. 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 This, you definitely get like um, polarized comments. Some people that, cause I think, you know, you guys obviously see me on the on the DDU and, and Twitch, mm-hmm. but there there's a huge portion of my audience that's only ever heard me speak nicely um, and calmly, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and they've only, they've only and they've seen that for seven years. So it's a bit of a shock yes. to the system um, mm-hmm. when I'm a bit uh, yes. more relaxed, uh, and, and I and I get that. And uh, the, the, that's a funny thing, though. I think. <laughs> I've tricked people into thinking that I'm just the law nerd, right? <laughs> That's what it is. That's what makes it so great. Like yeah. it's this, this again. So there's so there's a big section of people who only know you as the smooth, 
calm mm. lore master who gives us yeah. these great stories and these great imagery. Shout out to Gamma Trap because I love what you guys do together too. Oh, yeah. And it's like, um, it, it, it's so cool. But then it's like, you see you unleash, especially PvP or like Crucible, and then with this oh. Halo series, it's so funny. And shout out, your sound effects, whatever you make a mistake, is hilarious. I love that little <laughs> that little squeegee noise that you do. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Classic, classic. I, I love yeah. all the little things you throw in. Like, you have fun with it, and it's a personality that a lot of people don't see from you. They just think you're just yeah. some, you know, always quiet, cool kind of guy, and it's kind of fun, you know what I'm saying? Well, you've got like yeah. the radio podcast voice, just throw it on in the car and be like, I'm mm. I'm chilling, like good vibes. Chilling. Switches yeah. over to the next video and you're like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true as well. Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, in a good way, a lot of people say they, they listen to my videos to relax or to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, so I can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Next in playlist is probably not uh, uh, conducive to to getting a good night's rest. Um, but uh, th th that's they really had where it started during that's, that section. <laughs> yeah, yeah like they all, all of a sudden wake up and they have a feeling to play Halo. Um, yeah. That that that's where it all started. Really, was was trying to diversify um, mm. not only on YouTube but also on Twitch. And mm. uh, honestly, Halo was a gateway for me. Because before that, I was still pretty reserved on Twitch. I think I was still trying to fit into the Law Master box, mm -hmm. um, and it was pretty draining because it was just it was just a constant barrage of mm. law questions. It was like mm -hmm. you know. I, what like some just come in? Wow! Tell me about this theory, this like obscure theory on Oryx or something. You know, when it said chrysalis and Oryx, do you think? And I was, I was like. Oh, did you know how much oh, I spent hours researching one topic? You want me to answer this? In like, yeah. You know, a I'm couple just gonna minutes. pop off answer. Like, I got my encyclopedia, but I, yeah. I want to reference it. It's a good point. It's so, good point. so we do. We still do a little bit, but you know, especially when new law comes out, we'll we'll we'll, we'll put the 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 hats on and the spinfall hats on, and we'll, we'll read through some of the new uh, law tabs. But Halo was, I think, uh, a big, like you say, a. Uh, uh, eye opener for a, a big portion of my audience to sort of see another side and it also gave me a huge confidence boost to stream other games and to just be a little bit closer to myself without it's it's good the, to the be, rate of voice on yeah it's yeah. good to sometimes just be you as opposed to mm -hmm. having to kind of really fit into another box as you said so it's nice to just to be a little more comfortable not quite feel as on and just have a little bit more freedom and fun and the same thing yeah. like Outriders recently. I've been hooked on that a bunch lately. And you said you've played it a little bit too. Man. And it's, I've, been, I've got it's good. 50 hours, which is a problem. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So I might even have more than that. I've got oh, a wow. Seriously? <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. I've played it a bit. Um, a bit. It, <laughs> Smidge. It, it, look, I, I did a review on this too, actually, mm -hmm. uh, on the channel, which was not quite screamy Halo Marlin and not quite. Uh, law nerd Marlin, so it's a little bit in between. Um, I th and I, I, I absolutely because after Halo, we did this whole nostalgia trip and we played every game that I missed on Xbox basically. Ooh. Timefall 2, we did. Oh, um, that's so Shock. good. Timefall 2 was is freaking amazing. Oh, it is amazing. so good. It is so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I had this stint of games that I just absolutely hated and so I had to stop. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry if people like Gears of War, but I absolutely, just, I, I just, I could I not handle it. <laughs> I, 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 I heard what no, you no, said. No, no, I was like, I have played, I played, I haven't played any. I tried five, mm -hmm. looked pretty, combat was kind of cool. I, it just didn't stick with me. And granted, I don't have the history in the franchise. How many oh, did you play or how, how many did you get through? I didn't even get to the first one. Oh, did I? I may have did Gears of War one. I okay. I don't even know. I <laughs> do you know what I I cover shooters is not my thing. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the writing was probably edgy and cool when you're like mm -hmm. a teenage boy back in the day, <laughs> but like it's it's pretty it's pretty rough going back. And then just <laughs> character design just really didn't click with me every okay. time. I s <laughs> what, yeah, just, you're, 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 what is this? <laughs> Are you just serious? ultra meathead, like heavyweight meathead. Uh, Y'all feeling my bandana? 
<laughs> flavor, <laughs> you got flavor saver. Do you call yeah. it a flavor saver? Oh, there? The little, the little, yeah. the little um, yep. the little goatee patch, whatever it's called. Yeah, um, something. So I look. I went into Outriders thinking this is going to be trap. Like I actually, in a bit of a mean way, in a bit of a, mm. I, I played Anthem the day before. Because I was like preparing. Prepare yourself oh mentally. My God. <laughs> I, so I, I streamed Anthem. Ironically, Oof. I bought it the day before they closed production. Mm. Um, and I accidentally wow. bought it twice. That's a long story. Oh, but, no. Oh, man. Jeez. So I bought Anthem twice the day before they <laughs> before closed. They canceled for ten. Before Damn. They canceled. I don't think <laughs> anybody else can have claim to that at all. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. So that's all yours, brother. Did that, and I was like, this is- Because I was getting big Anthem vibes from Outriders, and I was mm -hmm. like, I don't see the point. Mm -hmm. And I also don't like cover shooters, and I got right. in there, and I'm like, I think this game has potential. And I, I, and I think it's hitting a lot of notes. I still don't like the, you know, the third person, but yeah. their uh, the abilities and the builds and the mm -hmm. RPG elements are mm -hmm. so nice so far yep. mm -hmm. that if there's enough end game content, it's some, mm -hmm. it's something that I'll be jumping into and playing a lot. Yeah, it's oh, like for, for me you. the same way. Have you touched it yet, Cognito? I know you've been busy. I don't I, know if I, I've def I did once, but I, my experience. I don't want to comment yet because my experience was it the You're greatest. Early? Yeah, because I had, um, from what I was told, Pyromancer is not the good start. And I, I touched Pyromancer and I didn't have the greatest time. Takes, but again, I, that one takes, that yeah, one's got a specific yeah. style. So everyone's told me Trickster, Devastator, do those and then try again. And, and my time was very limited. Yeah. So I, knew I don't want to comment so. until I really, yeah. really touch it, you know, kind of thing. And yeah. here, here's the thing I think they'll put people off mm. is... The story does have flavors of Gears of War, and I think yeah. if you take it too seriously, like my first like an hour, two hours was like this was is rolling, so was, trash. And I then, was like, rolling my eyes, and I'm trying to be nice, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm really trying to be nice, and and I don't again not to you know cut you too much, my life. It's um the issue I was having, or at least on console, is like the game is sixty. But like the the, the cut scenes, are cut scenes and they're doing this weird shift and it's camera weird, shake, yep. Oh, yeah. and then the, the um the actual conversations. I was rolling my eyes a lot of yep. times. Yep. I'm like, oh yep. my god, what's going on? So, yeah. So what changed it for me mm -hmm. is talk to me, save me. I was in the exact same thing. Okay. And then there was a couple sections where the writers make it very obvious that they're well aware that what they're writing is complete. B grade daytime <laughs> TV trash, right? And they sort of break the fourth wall and acknowledge okay. it. Okay. I'm like, okay, I'm on board. They're having fun with it, you know, yeah. like, mm -hmm. and, and that's the bit that changed for me. Like, I, because I was sort of taking it super serious, like, and because it does, it does have it, this serious yeah. overarching it starts arc. It's kind of that way. But yeah. then it's like a B grade daytime vampire, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, yeah, CW fun. show is what we're leaning yeah. towards, it sounds like here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and then and then they they had a bit of fun with it. I'm like, fine, I'm on board. I, okay, I'll, I'll, that that's the humor. Like, I just couldn't work out the tone until a little bit later in the demo, and then mm. I'm fine with it. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, all the camera shake, you know, the the blur, the, the camera blur, shake, yeah. the cutscenes are all just disgusting. Mm -hmm. But um, I honestly, if you just if you if you want to have a good time, with the demo, just mm. skip all the cutscenes because <laughs> I think if you can just get to the RPG elements gotcha. and see if it's your jam. And then be like, okay, I'll get it when it comes out. Gotcha. The demo's okay. free, and then then you can pay attention to the story because they're gonna they're gonna remove camera shake and blur yeah. and all that kind okay. of stuff in the in the in the when it comes no. out. So no, I, I, I yeah. trust your judgment. I judge your judgment because yeah. I think where you're winning me over is the fact that a you're not into the third person cover shooter kind of thing. You yeah. know what I mean? So you came in actually way more negative you know because Wanted you wouldn't expect it, it. Yeah. yeah and for yeah. it to win you over that's that to yeah. me now bodes well that i yeah. definitely I, i'm gonna give it another and, shot and the sure. reason why pyromancer is not the best experience is because some of the other class like it sort of wants you to play half cover shooter where the mm. other classes really want you to just chain abilities yep. and so mm. it, you basically don't even like the devastator you don't even use cover no. and that's mm. what really changes it for me Gotcha. Pyromancer is is a little bit more team based and ability yes. based and and it's hard to chain it together as well as some of the other classes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The Technomancer is like the the farthest range, probably most cover using 
you know, support class abilities. Your trickster and your devastator, as mm-hmm. as Mylan said, is like I, you don't want to be behind cover because you literally get healed by being mm-hmm. next to people. That's the whole purpose. Wow, okay. Higher okay. man, so you have to tag, and then when they and die, they die, then yeah, you get the and health back. And it's yeah. like trying to figure out the synergy of the abilities. Mm-hmm. And then when you get armor, like some blue armor, even in the demo, will change mm-hmm. up your abilities. Mm-hmm. There was one point I hadn't used for the Technomancer's Blighted Rounds. Mm-hmm. Hadn't used it that much. All of a sudden, I got one. Every time I got a kill, I got 30% of my ammo back. When mm-hmm. I finished, I had an extra magazine. I'm doing 30% more damage. All of a mm-hmm. sudden, I'm like a Technomancer feeling like a devastator. I'm just mowing everybody down, and I don't run mm-hmm. out of ammo. And I was like, mm-hmm. so the the RPG depth of what the mods on the armor and then the big weapons can do, the right. the how far you're going to be able to go into builds in this thing seems like it's mm-hmm. got a lot of fun. Yeah, no, got a lot of good, potential man. to it. Yeah, this is good. I'll definitely once things settle down for me, I'll definitely <laughs> welcome get to, to the Outrunners podcast. Podcast, baby. Woo! I mean, it's it's hard not to. Do- I mean, they had what two million da- downloads of the demo. It's like it's. I think it's going to be something that's probably going to fall at a good <sighs> time in April when all we really in Destiny probably have to look forward to is Guardian games. And I think mm-hmm. that month of April is probably very perfect for that audience to say, I can take a little break. And then probably in about a month, if you go hard on it, it's, it does have an endpoint. Probably pat back, pop back for the new season and see how yeah. things wrap up. So it's, it's like it's timing not a might live, be great. It's not a live service model. I think that's one of the greatest. Uh, I don't know if you watch Skill Up, but oh, uh, yep. I think one of the, the, the best points is it's very obvious that the developers have been paying attention to mm-hmm. this area this genre of loot and shoot it's not a live service Mm -hmm. um and the way that you gear up and get loot and even like their responses to loot cave you can see that they've paid attention to how destiny and bungie and other games do patches and and do things with their community and how they reward you for doing activities like Mm -hmm. in just previous games like i feel like anthem you when you actually started to get to the that the depth of it you're like mm-hmm. you guys haven't learned from all the mistakes bungie made you haven't been like paying attention yep. Correct. um and so yeah I, I i think that's what gives me a little bit of hope um mm-hmm. and you know you can do the demo for free the de- and that yeah. that shows a lot of confidence, confidence. in their product yep yeah, yeah. that was like it's a demo it's not a beta you it don't is. have to pre-order it's exactly. not an alpha mm-hmm. yeah, it's an actual demo which is like mind-boggling to me i'm like Huh? Yeah. yeah. And your progress uh, carries into the game. Like over. You, you could literally yeah. be like, and starting on chapter two. Like that just I think that was one thing I said too is like there's a point like why I was excited about the game. The depth, mm-hmm. the RPG, the classes seem cool, but when they're like, here's the game, this is everything that's in it, it's already mm-hmm. baked in. You're not waiting for like patch one, patch two. It's basically mm-hmm. done. And then their responsiveness, as you said, to the demo, they've already Patch the back end on the server. There's a patch coming mm-hmm. with, as you said, the motion blur to the demo they're patching. And the demo doesn't have an end date. It's, I don't know. I've enjoyed yeah. it. I'm probably going to have a good, probably good solid month's worth of fun. I've already got way too many hours, so I'll shut up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no, this yeah, is good, yeah, man. Sorry, well, should we hijack it? No, 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 it's not, dude. Welcome to the Outriders <laughs> podcast here. <laughs> I, never, I never know sometimes, because this is how we, we run our podcast, too, you know, I and know. we just make a joke. There'll be someone in the comments who say podcast starts at this time. and <laughs> That's us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no. We're tangent, and yeah, it, it <laughs> can go off, brother. It, it, but it's fun. It's fun. You got to have stuff like that. What I was going to say, um, you know, I want to get back to obviously what you said earlier, which is, you know, you finding your way in content creation, you know, mm. you kind of got that niche. You said, okay, no one's doing lore and, and you, you stuck to it and you, you've been killing it. What I wanted to really celebrate you was, was um, what I considered like the magic moment was, you know, you being selected by Bungie to do like the anthology, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and just being a part of that and being like, tell me how that experience was for you. And um, just in general, like, do you consider it like a magic moment for you as a content creator? Yeah. Destiny Law content I, creator. I definitely think it was the pinnacle moment to be to to take something from like a YouTube channel to being part of the franchise, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be involved with it. Um, and it came <laughs> from the, the Bible. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Volume one. I've got the volumes behind me as well. Um uh, it, it came from the very first summit. Uh, so this would have been after D2 sort of crashed and burned and they held the summit at the studios in Seattle. And um, 
My name is Bife. Wasn't invited. Suck dead. <laughs> <laughs> you, you foul. Are you <laughs> you do the shadow. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm good friends. I'm friends I with Bife. I know you do have friends. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone in the comments, don't get, don't get upset. Right? Oh, 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 oh. I was gonna say, there's no way you and Bife can't be friends. You have to like no. talk and compare notes and stuff. Like you guys are two of the like the two big people in lore that I can honestly think of. Like it's crazy. There's no way you can't. There's no way yeah, you guys yeah. are cool. That, that was a good shot. And, though. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was good. And 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 Bife's got a good sense of humor. There's a lot of yes. banter between us, so it's it's fun. Um, so I went there. So I, I was I was probably the only person representing law at mm -hmm. the summit. And uh, we and there was two days of workshops with the developers from Sandbox and PvP and all this kind of stuff. This yeah. was before they re-added random roles. It's like this this was oh, a wow. level that we were. This is double yep. primary. Like, I was, I was mm. in I was in the meeting when everyone's like, we want random roles back, and the devs like gave in. I'm like, okay, wow, we'll do random roles again. Wow. Um, so. At one point, I got to the end of the first day and sort of looked at the agenda for the next day, and I said to, uh, you can thank uh, Patrick Casey, uh, mm. probably, because this is oh, sort of all, this guy. is the, this oh, is the snowball that caused the avalanche that sort of Let's led go. to this project. I said, man, mm -hmm. where's, the, where's the law? Where's the narrative? Mm. Because the narrative, that you removed the Grimoire cards too, right? So D2 was just the scannables. Mm. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, <laughs> can we yeah. can we talk to some people in narrative? And yes. uh, he pointed at Christopher Barrett, mm. uh, director. And Christopher Barrett noticed there were two people pointing at him, and he came over and said, <laughs> "Oh," and I said, "Oh, look, um, love to talk to someone about story." And mm -hmm. I, at that point, I had done a survey. Mm -hmm. uh, Five thousand people completed it, nice. mm. giving feedback on narrative so i had Ooh. a basically a summary document of mm -hmm. uh how to improve and uh he uh, christopher barrett organized a meeting with um senior narrative lead mm -hmm. and uh outside of everything else it was just me oh it was me oh no i'm gonna feel bad i know i can got their faces in my head i can't remember the handles now um so good so good Ah, doesn't matter. Are you talking about like the other? I'm pretty sure it's Mercules. Oh, Mercules and Spot. Mercules, Mercs, Spot. Was Spot there with two? I can't remember. I mm. feel like anyway, she was a crazy raid person. I remember her going to one. There was three of us and okay. uh, narrative team and Christopher Barrett. Mm. Went through everything um, and uh, a little, once I got back to Australia and a couple months later, uh, Christopher Barrett called basically and said, hey, we got an idea. Mm. Um, thinking of an anthology. Mm. Uh, do you want to do it? And I said, chill. <laughs> how do you, how and, could you possibly say no? Like, <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was the, the, the idea was it was a, my role was to curate the series or to curate um, a number of volumes um, to think about how we could make a series where you could read it. Well, actually my goal, I had so much free. I could do whatever I really wanted to be Woo! honest. They just said, the only instruction I got is we we want you to put together volumes. Okay, that already exists. That's gotcha. it. Mm -hmm. So I I themed um, actually I themed six books. Mm. Um, looking through, even though they just contacted me for the first one, I, I said, "Well, look, I don't want to put everything in the first book because then you got nothing to put in the other books." So no. I sort of thought about what themes were happening and and what would be in each book and. Um, Mm -hmm. started to think about where you would place Grimoire cards. And even at that point, we didn't even have, uh, like, the, the old school Grimoire cards didn't have an order. Yeah, that's so, correct. Like, so I was just, like, going off theories of, like, what, you know, the last word two, after ghost of last word, after uh, <laughs> thorn. So I was just putting it together, which I what I thought would make mm. not only chronological sense, but... Mm. Uh, if you have no knowledge of law, you could read volume one. It's from start to finish and follow a story. And that was sort of my goals is you could read the whole book and it, it would read like a book. Mm -hmm. um, and you could read each chapter and each chapter would be themed too. And there'd be this overarching um, sort of narrative for each thing. So, you know, book one was was Dark Mirror. Um, yes. And the symbolism of that is that uh, what I wanted readers to think about is are the hive any different from us mm. um would uh, do we not do the same thing that the hive do and and that's why that book revolves around the story of the hive and how they tried to avoid their genocide their genocide and then 
you know, Dark Guardians and we go through the same cycle um, and it ends with uh, Eris Morn uh, giving us and creating Touch Malice, which mm-hmm. brings us nice back to a, a loop of like, huh, I guess we are like the Hive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, some of them we may, we may realize. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah that, yeah. that continue. And so it was definitely a pinnacle. It, it Surprisingly, though, you know, Bungie's like any other company, any other work, any, any like the work I would say is not typically fun because I just <laughs> had to reread like thousands of Grimoire cards and think about like, okay, I've got a Grimoire card that's like, you know, the old school stuff was like Shockblade from mm. like Wielded by Dredges. I'm like, is this important? And <laughs> right. if it is important, and so I have to do that with every card and think about, wow. is this important? And is it if it is important, where should it sit, sit. in relation to the entire series? Mm. And that is a pain in the butt. <laughs> I was just about to ask oh, you, like, is it just the giant bulletin board with strings going everywhere? What connects in what order? Yeah. In your it's, head. It's a... <laughs> It's a little bit like it obviously got easier and easier because now they've got books, right? So now, like, I, I sort of broke the back of it with volume one, two, and three because it, mm. it includes a lot of the original stuff. Right. Um, and now that they have books, like, I, I think eventually it probably will just be a collection of their law books now. Right. So you don't need to change it up. You just need to decide what order you want to put them in. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that could be a little bit confusing, but... Um, yeah, to go through the old stuff was was challenging, but yeah. one of the really rewarding parts is they also just asked if I would give any direction f- to the artist, which was fucking Ooh. super cool. So, like, I I put little footnotes in uh, or, or comments on the on the drafts, just saying people would love to see Oryx versus Aka. So, and I'll just highlight <laughs> the the paragraph that described it, mm. and they basically like. Because it was just me and the products team. So it was me and like three other people and they didn't have any background in narrative law. And and then eventually when it was all sort of finalized, it went to narrative. But mm-hmm. for the most for the most working part, it was it was myself and the products team who were more about how do we print this and and the logistics of it and, and like an editor and stuff to get the formatting and all that kind of stuff right. Oh. And uh so I just had all this a, a lot of freedom in volume one anyway. So I think nearly all the images in volume one were were things that I recommended that I thought uh, players would like. I like mm-hmm. you got to draw like Akka fighting Oryx. You've got to nice. draw the three sisters. Got it. One of the opening now. images. Um, mm-hmm. You've got to draw like one of my favorite scenes is is Dredge and Yor being corrupted by the mm-hmm. witch. You know, so you've got the Titan sitting there with the witch over the shoulder, whispering in his ear. Like there's so many cool imagery um, sections in there. So yeah, I just left like footnotes like it would be cool if you drew this, and then like the the artist is amazing. They just Wow. Hit it out of the park. Um, right. So, yeah. Well, I've done, that- I did one, two, three. So, I haven't been mm-hmm. contracted past that. Um, mm-hmm. but that's pretty cool. Dude, that is amazing. Um, just one, two, for them to trust you with, with, with that level, you know, of mm-hmm. um, creativity and freedom. And then, you know, also there, there, there's some pressure to that. Not listening to you say it. Like, there's some pressure to it as far as going through everything again, curating it. And then placement, right? And, and making sure yeah. that things go cohesive. And I love what you said in reference to, you know, being a fan of law yourself. There's those, what we call those iconic moments, you know what I'm saying? In Destiny, like you said, with the sisters, with Dredge and Yor, the corruption, you know, um, Oryx and, and, and so many of that stuff from Taken King as well and how it leads to now. Like, I love how you left those footnotes because as Destiny fans, there's some moments we'd like to see visually, because yeah. those are iconic yeah. moments. So that, yeah. that's pretty cool there. Yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. really hard part for them was like, they didn't want to burn themselves for future content. So for example, like if they draw Korea Blade Transform, is that going to come up in the game in five, two, three, one year's right. time? Right. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised to be honest if there, if if some things are changed from the images drawn in the books because mm-hmm. it was done so long ago, and gotcha. maybe they 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 decide they want to go down a certain path, and mm-hmm. you know now it's there. But um, it's a uh, it was really cool being able to see that come to life, and um, I don't think I honestly don't think, and I think this is um, Christopher Barrett that probably really had my back in that mm-hmm. scenario was. 
think he just sort of because this was like in the worst time of Destiny yeah, Two. It was, like, the tie was low. It was bad. I remember that summit, man. Yeah. I remember it was that. about when we started our bad. podcast, actually, which yeah, was probably we, not we, Yeah, Curse of Osiris times. Yep. We started. We were Flashpoint at that point. Yeah, before we became the last word. Yeah, continue. and I feel like he he slid it under the radar as sort of like this small project, which is why it was just sort of contracting me. Everything was already written, right? So all the all, so it's basically like you know it was a bit of a it wasn't a huge risk because every the writers all the stuff was there. They just needed someone to put it together. Right. This is like and it was a bit of a test. Adapted and then, by Mylon Games. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was like I they hundred percent underestimated how many copies they would sell. They would sell. And as soon as Volume One released, and they sold out like twice or three times or something, mm. the team obviously grew. So then it was me and a, another gent uh, working on Volume Two and Three. Nice. Uh, they got they got in some some other old school dudes to um, help curate it and and theme it and and awesome. and go from there. And I think the, I mean that's why Volume One is such a safe safe. Yeah. Co- I mean you can't go wrong with the books. Of Sorry, do you know what I mean? Like fire, it's fire. It's 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 a very safe. Volume mm-hmm. to open with, which was also the plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, E. I got a uh, ton more questions. Oh, no. Like, random mm-hmm. question for chat. Somebody told me to ask Marbles, Hobbit, Destiny, Halo. Does that make any sense to you? Right. So, around the same time mm-hmm. that I started uh, on the journey of trying to think of um, content to make and how to diversify, and I guess. I'm a kind of person who is very deliberate in the content that I make um, and I like to plan that and think about the entertainment value that it might bring to a stream or a YouTube channel and to the point where I probably overthink it and talk myself out of out of doing stuff. And because Halo was so instantly successful streaming it and it was like I didn't plan it, I right. didn't think about it, it just, I just did it. So I took that mindset. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do stuff. And um, I think someone pressured me or said, do Marbles Race. Mm-hmm. And I, was like, okay, I know what you're talking about. Do Marbles yeah. Race. So we did a Marbles Race. And I thought, well, we've got to give you something, right? And w- when I very first started streaming, every time someone subscribed, I used to tell them a law story, so, and, like improv. So they wow. would just give me a topic and I would tell them a story. So they would say, oh, I, I love Shaq's. Okay, so I'd use their username and I'd be like, I'll, I'll tell a story and it, it would be like the story of how Shax broke his horn and it was mm. this person, right? <laughs> they had a fight, they snapped his horn off. This is the unknown law. So right. I'll do that. <laughs> That's so cool. I thought, all right, well, we'll do a marbles race and whoever wins, I'll tell you a story. Mm. And similar to Halo, it ended up being <laughs> like just the most random thing and it was like people love it. So we've been- We've basically got a book, and I have it transcribed now. It's an electronic wow. book, um, and I think we're up to like three hundred pages of just custom stories, like Marvel Universe kind of. Just there's Halo, there's, and, and I, I use a Lord of the Rings soundtrack because I love Lord of the Rings. So I actually mm. every every person starts off as a of, as, as a Hobbit <laughs> <laughs> because I, I I was I was making fun of my own subscribers, saying that like. They're all these like absolute massive law nerds, law hobbits that like sort of come in hunched over to the stream <laughs> and like, you know. So I did this skit where I was wearing like a hood and stuff, and it just ended up being this joke about all my nerdy subscribers being law hobbits, you know, these underground <laughs> yeah. cave dwelling, tell us the law, and this is a law story. So everyone starts tell off in law. this fictional world and, uh, Ooh. Yeah, we've we've had people embrace the darkness. We've had people piloting pyramid ships. We've had people <laughs> beat shacks. We've have and and we it's a bit like Dungeons and Dragons now. This is mm-hmm. sort of the universe we've been building. Um That's awesome. And so it's That's awesome, brother. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty fun. <laughs> so that's what he's talking about. Marvel's yeah. Hobbit's Destiny. Hey, well, shout out to Aaron Kill with the awesome question, Cognito. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Was the question? Oh, no, I'm saying, no, that's oh. that was the oh, question. Another one. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that was a great question, Eric Kelly. Yeah. Salute, to Eric Kelly. He, he's hilarious. Yeah, man. I mean, two things. Um, you know, I'm a big. I, I, I feel this is my opinion. Like now, I feel like the uh, narrative has been in a good place and it, it going in mm-hmm. the right direction in in game, right? And this is one of the things I know the Destiny community is not happy for the most part with certain things in the game and, and you know, the grind aspect and the reward yep. structure. We know what's wrong, yep. right? We know the trial stuff. But the thing yep. that I think doesn't get enough credit is I feel for the first time, 
they've been they've had this nice narrative flow usually going from season in in you know from from one con- one piece of content to another and i want to know your opinion like do you feel narratively at this point that Bungie's in a better place, you know what I'm saying, from a continuity to telling the stories and um, just in general, especially now what's going on, Season of Chosen, yeah. you know, Keitel, you know, this whole thing. Because the last point I'll say is that, you know, for me, and I, I will I will die on this grave, me and Paul Tassi went at it one time, but he, he actually, he agrees with me, is that I forgot what season it was, but it was the season that we learned, you know, um, when it was uh, Shaxx, Osiris, um, St. Fourteen. And it was the Devil's Ruin quest. And we got this great audio lore. And that's when we learned about um, Shaq singing the song that ends up being an evil song, you know, as far as yeah. the song of Sabathun yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. But it was those type of interactions. And what I like that they're doing, like when you see the Kyle, the Season of the Chosen stuff, and we have now Crow, um, Saladin, or all these different major players narratively, you know, using voice actors and, and, and telling the story, pr- pushing it that way. Do you feel... This is a good direction for them, or do you feel like, hey, you know, it's still room for a boom? How do you feel narratively, Destiny, right now? I'm just I gonna, think, I'm uh, just gonna pop in and say on. that's definitely not a leading question, leading, yeah. leading the witness here a little bit. <laughs> oh, well, I okay. mean, I'm just, I, I, I prefaced it by saying my opinion <laughs> yeah, yeah. is, but then what do you yeah. think your that's opinion right. is? Um, <laughs> I think Beyond Light mm-hmm. got it uh, pretty spot on. Okay. Um, because they introduced a lot of voice acting and dialogue. I think there's a huge portion of people that skip through text. Mm -hmm. And I still think there's a huge portion that's obviously of the story that's hidden. So you have to have other mechanisms to tell a story. Um, Destiny, I don't think will ever be the pinnacle of in-game storytelling. However, they do a really good job at lacing things for you to find if you are interested later. I think the main issue with Destiny is, well, the, it's not even an issue, it's a discussion point, and that is accessibility. Is it okay to have a game that you have to go and read a book to really know what's going on? Like, is that, and, and that's what, De- I think that's what Destiny probably is right now. Like, if you don't go consume YouTube content on the law, or you don't read quite a hefty part of text, you probably don't know what really is happening. And so it's not necessarily a bad thing because a lot of people dig that because it provides opportunity to enjoy their game whilst not playing. A lot of people read Grimoire cards, read law tabs on their lunch break. They'll listen to a YouTube video Whilst dri- like uh, people listen to my videos whilst driving to work on the train on the bus, so like, and they get to experience Destiny while they're not playing, and then when they get home and they do play, then their experience is enhanced because they understand some of the story. Mm-hmm. But the discussion point still is, do you like that? Are you okay with that? Right. Because I don't think we're gonna get the that you know that narrative. In game, as I think, I think the big releases like Beyond Light. I think Beyond Light was was a reasonable story to follow, but the real juice was in Deepstone Crypt. You know, the mm. Beyond Light campaign was all about Aramis, and yeah. it was a fine story. Right. Um, it was it was a fine campaign, but the real meat and potatoes was Deepstone Crypt and Clovis Bray, and you couldn't get hold of that unless you read the collector's edition. Mm-hmm. So, how do people feel about that? And I think that's the that's probably more of the discussion than mm-hmm. uh, than anything else. I got you, but, but I, don't, I don't know how okay. I feel. I don't know yeah, how I, I feel say, about you, it I either. I'm pressure on you, like you, like where are you at, Cato? Now this whole thing. Where, how are you feeling about this? Um. So the irony is, I need it to be difficult because that that's what's that's what makes my channel successful. That's the irony, right? <laughs> Yeah, because a good people point. come to the channel because a good point. they don't know what's going on. <laughs> if if going everything on. is laid out in game, you're like, why <laughs> do I need to be here? That's a good point. Yeah, that's honest. Yeah, I really enjoy Kaido coming back. I think drip fed story loses a lot of me- momentum, mm-hmm. and Thank I think you. people yeah. lose 
they lose the passion to follow the story along when it's once per week you get this story segment. And especially mm-hmm. when the story segment, I mean, these segments we're getting uh, holograms with a bit of voiceover and, and right. mostly text. Right. Um, so I think it's, I do think it's hard to keep people engaged in a season mm-hmm. like that with a yeah. drip fed story. So I don't yeah. think it's at how, okay. how good it could be running right now. And I especially think when people fall away, it becomes even harder. And I sometimes think that the drip fed stuff is also pushing people a little bit away. And so, like, I, I, I stepped away for a good two weeks. I'm like, I have no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> and I'm meant to be the Lord dude. Right? And I stepped away for like a couple of weeks and I, I don't I don't understand where, where Kyle is and what's going on. And, and mm-hmm. well, actually, I do because I read the law. But if I didn't, yeah. <laughs> if I hadn't read the book, then I'll be like, huh? Mm-hmm. What's happening here? Fair enough. So, fair enough. E. Yeah. Uh, I think I I don't think they've got my I, my overarching thought on story is this. I think that they should have a yearly narrative arc. Mm. You know, let's say the Curse and the Dreaming City. Okay. I don't think that should still be left unresolved. Mm. I, I think support when, that decision. <laughs> uh, when Forsaken came out, I think there should be an expectation. We're introducing this plot line. Each season might go off on a slight tangent, but it will contribute back to it. Mm-hmm. And not only this, you know, there's, there's the the franchise arc, and then there's like a, what I would like to see is a franchise arc, and then a twelve month arc, yep. and then all the seasons are like the rivers that feed into everything. Yep. And so, yeah, we might go fight a vex, but it, it should feed back in this idea of the curse. And so right. every season, when you pick it up, it's it's. Give me a little bit more information. And then eventually, boom, you actually get a like a conclusion to it. Mm-hmm. And then you move on. And then the next big September release comes out and you get the next big 12-month arc, right? Mm-hmm. And people can understand what's going on. I feel like Bungie has started many, many 12-month arcs that have just remained- Remained, yeah. Unresolved. Yeah. And I think that people lose motivation to try to keep up with it. Right. Um, and- that's why <laughs> law channels do so well. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to the Lord, yeah. <laughs> Good, dude. Uh, no, I mean, for me, I said, like, I've been things like, hey, I've always wanted like an armor 3.0 for a while, and now Transmog is going to exacerbate the need for that. Um, I mean, you mentioned, yeah, there's issues with the game. Sure, we still love the game. We're crazy passionate about it. The piece that does me have uh, intrigued, though, is the long term, as you said, those 12 month. What is now we know the light versus dark saga, well, how that's going to culminate with Lightfall and the unknown expansion. But also, as Mylan said, for me, the part that burns me is the it's like I get one page of a book every week in the mail <laughs> and I literally cannot get it any faster. And yeah. you could as I mean, there's lore to go in and read. And now with like the pieces that we're getting out of the Glycon ship and knowing what Callus is trying to commune with all the darkness stuff. And it's just like, Mm -hmm. there is some craziness going on, but also again, if I just be like, Hey, here's this cool, like dead man's tail. And I got my gun. I don't really care about the catalyst though. It's a scout rifle. There's Mm. so much people miss in there. And it's just the depth of like what Callus is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Commune with the darkness kind of went in. Then you got the ship floating back out. I don't Mm. know if, I still don't actually know if Callus is completely dead, but might be. So mm-hmm. you, I'm sure you can probably answer that. <laughs> Maybe. Well, that's what I'm, uh, I, I can't really. But that's Lord what I'm going to work question. on today. The Law Hobbit question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that's what that's what I'm going to work on today. Actually, is okay. I want to sort of bring that up as a topic because um, mm-hmm. I think there's there's some interesting stuff to talk about with mm-hmm. with Callus in that book. Mm-hmm. Um, I sometimes think about if I wanted to improve narrative. Or at least I think accessibility, I think, to story more than improved narrative. Because, you know, whether you like a story or not, it's very subjective. But I think it's more objective to think about how people access it. Mm-hmm. And I think um, what would make my channel be less relevant, which would make it more relevant to people story wise, I just, I would love for a playlist. And this is so much work and so much money, but I would love for you to be able to. Go into your audio options, mm-hmm. um, drop everything down, select the law book, and they've got, you know, I mean, I would love Stephen Fry to narrate it. Oof. They've got <laughs> someone, right? And you go, you know oh. what? I want to listen 
Just yes. like a codex in like yeah. Mass Effect Brother. or whatever. Oh, you just wanna, stole like... my dude. I was just about to say that. that <laughs> yeah. I hate to cut you because you're on fire right now. That is why Mass Effect is beloved. Because mm-hmm. of the codex, and then you you re- and you learn about the races through a narrator, and in certain different points, continue, Mylan. You on fire? I've been wanting people to do that. I mean, just imagine, yeah. right? That you could that you could make a custom playlist of narrated law pages or law books whilst you do your bounties. Because I feel like that is how people consume YouTube content in Destiny, and in general, that's how they play Destiny. I feel like people do. They they do their daily destiny dishes and they hang out with mates and they talk shit or they put a YouTube video in the background. And I yep. think if you want to make law more accessible, mm-hmm. you know, no, not everyone. I know it seems odd, but not everyone can read either. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it, it I'm sure there's an issue for people to engage in the story. And uh, it'd be cool to just have like, I would do it. Yeah. I would listen to it. Yeah. It would improve my my experience. Because, you know, sometimes I read things only once and I, I don't yeah. quite get it. Get the context. Uh, well, I mean, if they slowly, right. like, started, if they could use, like, the, uh, you could honestly, as Bungie, like, put those out as, like, a podcast, too. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, as you're saying, to, like, take the audio, but if they already have the voice lines anyway, go make them accessible out of the game, too. As you said, if you want to drive around and be like, I want to hear about, you know, Keitel's book that's going on this, then just pop it in your car or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. I feel, but, yeah, I'm... I will say one thing with Beyond Light I did really like. It's like the idea of listening to the book, the books that are in mm. game. I couldn't think of a better way. That's like perfect. The one mm. other piece I really did like that Beyond Light did that I haven't seen much of except probably went from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2 is mm. the bit of storyboard. Kind of animated storyboard is the best way I can describe it. When you go and it's showing kind of more the history yes. of the fall. That yes. The way they did that. Uh, like throw those in bits and places. Now I don't know how expensive and how hard they are to create because I know artists can do it, but it could still be more, you know, sketchily do- like done in sketch for sketch. Yeah. Done as more of a sketch as opposed to like a full yeah. render. Um, yeah. I, I and- think that that I actually put that as I actually said that to the narrative mm. team. I said, the, send them some feedback. I was like, <laughs> I think these are a great use of resources because that I, I, they can't be too expensive because okay. Gamma Trap and I did one for a promo and it took us like two days. Okay. Like, <laughs> uh, Shout out to like, Yeah, you can you can do it. You know, it, it, it's literally charcoal um paintings, but you know, di- digital charcoal paintings, it's just an effect they're using yeah. with like ink blots uh, after effects with voiceover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The voiceover is probably the most expensive part, like I, yeah. I would say. Even Ghost um, of Tsushima did that. We, we that we like, right? E with the Legends Tales and Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, with yeah, the, exactly. Same that, thing. Yeah, the Legend and Ghost of Tsushima. Those yeah. were so amazing because you got like a you got so much more depth on those like the tales the way they did it. It didn't take mm-hmm. that long. You got a cool mm-hmm. idea and you're like, yeah. now I know what's going. On. No, that piece yeah. when they did that and Beyond Light stuck out so much as something of they could explain. Maybe they do that stuff towards the end of a season, like once we get the full story of what's going on with the Glycon. You know, mm-hmm. and maybe it unlocks in the game and you can be like, hey, here's the history of this ship. And you could go watch two minutes or whatever. Yeah. It wouldn't take that long to be like, this is what happened. They went in here. Callus messed up, tried to talk, pop back out, kind of dead. We don't like whatever it is like that wouldn't take too long. And somebody can be like, hey, do you want to know the history of this? Here's a quick storyboard thing. Cool. Yeah. Like that's yeah. in game, I think yeah. would do. And they wouldn't have to go, as you said, the lore books that you do, obviously, because I want you to keep your job like that deep type stuff, like still takes a little bit more effort, there. but some of yeah. like the higher end stories of what's currently going on, I think that'd be a what nice way to keep some people a little little bit more informed. Well, I think I think like this is sort of what I'm saying before is it's the accessibility. And I think I think um resources should go into those hooks. How do you hook people into wanting to dig deeper? Because once you've got them hooked on that, the, the your job everything else is already there. Like it, all the deep lore is there, all the books are already there. But I feel like one of the areas of missing is like, how do you hook people in? I think those little cutscenes, those charcoal paintings with the ink, you know, blotches are, are a great hook. Yeah. Um, you know, more voice acting is 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 a great way to get people involved. Um, Absolutely. Give me a playlist where I can have it read it to me. Now I'm like, because once it's read to you, well, then you're gonna go seek information because you don't get the answer yet. You just you get the information becomes available, mm-hmm. and then now it's like, all right, how do I actually? 
Yeah. You're either going to start piecing it together yourself and talking to friends about it, or you're going to go start watching videos, or you're going to start being on forums or Reddit or whatever. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you go because I know time's limited. I don't want to. I, I could. I could go crazy right now with him. No, I mean, I feel like we're <laughs> yeah. just having. If you got one, go just off the top yeah, of your head. No, so. I mean, just yeah, he's on fire. Just your personal, um, you know, favorite characters in the law, or just moments when you felt Dave executed really well. But like um, a top three, top three lore yeah. moments list. Is that what you're trying to yeah. get out there? Uh, I, yeah. I always struggle with this. I, I feel like, um, <laughs> I feel like when I write a law script, it's always my favorite law script for the time. <laughs> that's because probably that's what you're why most, I do it. Yeah, it's what you're most fresh yeah. into. You dove into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I hate it because I spend, you know, an entire day <laughs> or two days. <laughs> And I, I and I must have some sort of wipe in my memory, and I just get rid of it. And I'm like, huh? What did I say? And pe people quote me. I'm like, I don't remember saying that. I don't know. Um, oh, I honestly like. I I'll need to open up my videos and have a look. Like, like I said before, I think um, some of the scenes that really stand out, I do think, is some of the the dredging, uh, mm. dredging your corruption with the with mm. the. Um, with the light and the the wizards sort of whispering in his ear was one of the things that I I really uh, enjoyed. Um, keep, keep talking for a second. Let me bring let me bring up no, some stuff. I knew I should have. I knew this. You go know what? That's at, a good at the the, the um, creation of Touch of Malice is also uh, a really cool one uh, mm. that I that I really enjoyed. There I think we go. the the delivery of Touch of Malice was. Uh, I liked the idea of exotics. Mm -hmm. being interwoven into this overarching plot and then you get mm -hmm. given it at the end and it just mm -hmm. makes it seem that much more powerful. And I think Touch Malice is probably the greatest exotic in regards to lore. Yeah. Maybe you got Thorn and and La Thorn La you know, they've got those trilogy of like D one guns that like yeah. were just so cool. And I, I don't know if anything's come as close to them. Gallahorn, mm -hmm. you think about Gallahorn, Touch Malice, Thorn, Last Word. Like, they were just so interwoven to so many stories that it's like. Fair enough. Those are good choices, man. Those are good choices. Yeah. Well, yeah. What you got you? Uh, what are your favorite ones? You tell ooh. me. Yeah, I was going to say. Maybe I can criticize it. I'll let you start. <laughs> then I'll go. Part of it is just when you go back to, I guess for me, the fact that I haven't ever gotten into lore as much in a lot of things just because. I haven't spent seven years with a whole lot of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. So getting into, it's like the more you're like, okay, I want to know a little bit more. I want to go get the history. And when you get in truly like the, what the hive started as to become, to work with the worm gods, to just almost the creation of the hive, the depth that for one that Bungie mm -hmm. put into it, but also even just when I think back, it's like, I have this weird special place for like Crota's End Raid just because mm -hmm. thematically it fits the hive and like the kind of frenetic nature to them. And then mm -hmm. when you go learn more about them, you kind of understand more about the power vacuum that happened and Oryx. And mm -hmm. there's so much there for me. It's always been like the hive have been cool. Mm -hmm. The darkness in theory is cool. I just don't know a damn thing about them yet. But right. um, and then honestly, recently it's been like the almost the polar opposite of Keitel being a mm -hmm. not a partner in all of this, but mm -hmm. not not Gaul, like the right. opposite of Gaul to see that, like somebody who's willing to talk and aim guns, but then not fire and back off. Right. And then it's like the same thing. You dig in, you realize what happened to their world when you get a little more. So there's just some mm -hmm. cool like the the enemy races is like, yeah, we're guardians. We have kind of a cool history, but like mm -hmm. the enemy races, both the cabal, as I've learned a lot more this season, which has been really fantastic because I feel like they've mm -hmm. been under, under misunderstood, I guess. Misunderstood, at least to yeah, me. good point. Uh, yeah. And then, but just the depth of the hive are both mine too, probably. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, for me, I, I think peak storytelling for me is probably like uh, Forsaken as far as, um, just from the introduction to the Dreaming City, the lore with that, Riven, and um, basically a culmination of all these different, you know, Destiny iconic lore figures that we knew about. We knew about Amonkar and stuff like that, but to actually see one and then the curse and then the Shattered Throne, the Ascendant Realm, I, I, I think, and visually the way they displayed it in the game, the aesthetic of it, you know what I mean? All of those things coming together and 
for me, which I was wanting to ask you earlier, was that my forsaken is it, it ranks so high for me is that I love that cohesiveness la- narratively, right? When you do the campaign and then that transitions into the raid and we have a reason as to why we're going into it. Tekken King probably did that best as far as why it's going yeah. into an Oryx. But um, what I felt where Forsaken then take it a step further is, okay, first time you beat a boss and then, okay, now we're delivering. We have to take Riven's heart out to do the Queen's Walk and stuff like that. And then the cycle of the curse and then the, the world being affected afterwards, right? True. So. You know, they didn't resolve that part yet, but but yeah. I, I do like the fact that it was just cohesiveness that narratively, yeah. you know, you went through yeah. it. And I think that to me is them probably at their best. So it kind of broke my heart when they said that, you know, we're not yeah. going to ever get anything like Forsaken size again. Yeah, I, agree. Hit me. I think Forsaken's pretty close to like the yeah. blueprint of a, if they resolve the Dreaming City like six months later through like, um, the seasons, I think Ooh. that would be the blueprint for how to deliver not only gameplay but story, um, raids, how that all ties in, exotics, all that kind of stuff. A um, couple other, so I just had a quick look through my video. Let's go, let's go. Just recently, Banshee 44 was Whoa. super cool. Ooh. That was good. That yeah. was good. Yes. Yes. No, that once again, question. tied to an amazing exotic um, and answered sort of this age old question of why is Banshee's memory so rubbish? <laughs> really nice. Makes really sense. nice. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a good great, one. great. Um, Clove, I, th- I think they did an amazing job with Clovis Bray uh, and Deepstone Crypt. Woo! I think um, we, we, we always knew they were a dodgy company and. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 a big corporation just manipulating and doing whatever they want. And I think they did a really cool job with painting a a picture of, um, you know, if we were into, if we had multiple planets that we lived on, there would be a big corporation like Clovis Bray doing some dodgy ass <laughs> shit on like Europa. Uh, Thanks. And I think they, they got that really well done. Um, mm. Clovis Bray is a great villain. Oh, he's amazing. I love the voice act and I love um, his narration. Well, the AI, the crypt AI, a narration during the raid of him, you know, like when you're infiltrating, like, do you realize you're infiltrating the great, you know, C- Clovis Bray? You, you know, like you guys don't realize what you're doing. And he's going to stop at anything to protect his science and all the shady, dodgy stuff that he's been doing on this space station. But continue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I love. Uh, and then finally, I think one of the best fight scenes in Destiny was uh, Felwinter versus Shax from memory. Mm. I think it was Shax uh, telling the bit of the backstory of the Iron Lords and how. Uh, is it was it, it was Felwinter and Shax, right? It was Shax. I don't remember that. Felwinter. I'm pretty sure. I can't, I can't even remember now. I remember. Damn, I'm trying. I'm, I'm messing up now because it was a fight. Yeah. I'm trying to remember that. This is when we discovered the whole. He was, in essentially, uh, Rasputin's son, yeah. and, and 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 Rasputin was tracking him. I just I can't remember specifically if the fight was Shax because it's been a while since I read it. I'm pretty sure Shax yeah. knocked Felwinter's head off multiple times, and it was one of the best fight scenes ever. Um, <laughs> to there, there, there's some more recent, more recent examples. Okay, good man, it's good. Look, great stuff, brother. Great stuff, Gaddy. Uh, you got one. Go. <laughs> No, no, I mean, I, I pretty much went with that um, as far as the, uh, what you call it, as far as, um, you know, I <laughs> said the chat, Shaq's beheading him like 53, so yeah, 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 the chat agrees, yeah, 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 yeah for sure, for sure. Shax Just is... backhanded his face off. Gamma Trap did some really cool art of... Uh, Shaxx is doing this backhand and just ripping off Felwinter's head. It was... Uh... <laughs> That's kind well, of I, here's, kind a, of here's a good tie-in, actually. Here's a good yeah. tie-in to this, because yeah. Outriders is... Uh, without bringing it right back to Outriders, Outriders <laughs> is not T for Teen, right? And yeah, I've all and Destiny is in gameplay sense is, and um, but the law obviously isn't. And it, I've always felt that the 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 rating system has has held Destiny mm, back good from. Point. And and playing Outriders really reminded me. Oh, this is what gore looks oh, like. Man. This is what like <laughs> when you destroy an alien, there's blood and guts everywhere. And oh. I and I feel like 
Destiny has such darkness to it, but it mm. just doesn't come through Good point. in the game because they're, they're T for Teen. Yeah, I kind of forget how much blood my shotguns have caused to pop all over my screen. The trickster, <laughs> when it uses its slow bubble, you do your temporal blade and you're just watching all these body pieces and rib cages slowly break apart. It's kind of beautiful and like just, you know, a symphony of destruction as you watch it all go down and then the bubble goes away and it all goes just like, and it's mm -hmm. hilarious because in that moment you're like, it's been a while since I've seen this type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, yeah. even like you shoot like a fallen and they kind of like wisp away and they all have their little specific deaths, but there's not a lot of blood and guts hardly at all. If any in the game that I can honestly think of intentionally, as you said, if mm -hmm. it's teen, it's not good point Mature, i never thought about that he's absolutely yeah. right and that that it's, could it's, hold you back creatively yeah it's interesting how they don't get pulled up they can almost write whatever they want and it doesn't impact the rate like i mean the books of sorrow is its story of genocide <laughs> like do you know like yeah. it's 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 interesting how they can be so dark in the writing and and, and it be fine yeah. Uh, maybe the rating guys have not actually read any of the podcasts. <laughs> they they're not going to get that far. We'll pass the ratings. It's fine, guys. Just put whatever you want in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, just another another interesting sort of thought experiment for playing uh, mm -hmm. Outriders, especially especially with the writing. You know, there's lots of swearing and stuff. Yeah. In the dialogue, which uh, I always felt like D1 was a bit a bit more gritty. Yes. In yeah. regards to just the visually, mm -hmm. and when DJ came out, I had this like Overwatch, Overwatch like polish to it. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a almost, sheen almost to a it. Too, you sort of lost a little, lost a little bit of the grit. <laughs> yeah, a, little yeah, a little bit too, too happy. Clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I wanted to actually ask you, as when the state of the game dropped, obviously we know about the delay for Witch Queen. Um, I guess it's a two-part question, so we'll get ready. One mm -hmm. is the fact that there's the quote from one of the game directors saying, Savathun's setting up her dominoes, and then Zivu or Wrath is trying to mess with us right now. Is there anything you can even, like, have an idea, or what would you like to see from Savathun coming into the game that would be satisfactory to you, the way she's built and built up as a character? And then the second piece to continue past that as the light and, light and darkness saga has kind of a culmination in year mm -hmm. 10, we don't know the name of. Good point. Where would you, where do you, where would you like to see this game get to slash, or are there certain things you want to, you want to make sure you see happen? If that makes sense. Cool. I'll start with the second one, the light and the dark saga, because Good I think this me. is really super interesting because mm -hmm. that's, that to me is the end. That's the overarching narrative arc. So what, mm -hmm. what, what could possibly be after light versus dark? And I'm either skeptical that we'll get a proper resolution mm -hmm. because, I mean, we saw it like we're halfway there too. Like we've embraced the darkness now. Yeah. So uh, how do you concur? Uh, I, I sort of feel like for Destiny to keep going on, mm -hmm. the light – versus dark overarching story needs to remain. To me. Mm. The fact that they're talking about concluding it, like I would have thought that the conclusion of light versus dark is this is the end of destiny. Right. I so, think a lot of people would have thought that. Which was a big I'm assumption. I'm interested in yeah. what comes after. What I comes don't after. know uh, what comes after that because, okay, then, well, uh, you know, maybe that's what we're working towards because now that we've embracing light and dark, there's not a need to get rid of one. Like right. The whole message so far is you can have balance, yeah. um, and that they're they're equal parts of the same coin. So mm -hmm. you know why remove one force because mm -hmm. then there won't be balance essentially. Right. Um, and so it comes down to having enemies do similar things and wield light and dark powers against us. So you know that that could be where they're. They're heading and good theory, sir. But I don't, I don't, I don't know why you'd. I, I, I am honestly confused about mentioning light and dark saga because I just, mm. in my mind, that's just that's that's the Destiny franchise. It sounds like yeah. the essence that, of what Destiny is, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that started with um, the Stranger and all the questions of the Traveler. Now we know a little bit that the pyramids exist. We've seen them. Obviously, they took over part of you know the Soul System. 
I'm that's I, that's what has one me the almost the most intrigued to know that I'm going to be with this franchise for years because in my head, I want to know where it goes yeah. because I'm yeah. so intrigued to know how we get from where we are, where we've dabbled in the darkness, which didn't have too many ramifications yet. Mm-hmm. Lightfall by name, even if it's just a filler name, the theory behind Lightfall losing light, maybe actually being a thing. Is that real? I don't know. Right. But yeah, it's like that's they've built such an intriguing world. It's like the fact that it's three years out. And I'm like, oh, I just want to know right now. But obviously, yeah, we won't. <laughs> Course. no that that's that's great i mean um i agree like the the light versus dark saga that that's been the overarching theme you know as far as what we just know for what destiny is so to hear them say like you know mylan said the conclusion of the light versus dark saga yeah it definitely you know raises questions okay so where the hell do you go after this because this seems to be the foundation of what destiny is built on yeah and- i mean unless it's just the pyramid ships right unless they're just mm-hmm. talking about the pyramid ship conclusion because we it's haven't possible. really got an answer to that. Yes. Like, they just invaded and, like, whole planets disappeared. Right. And then we embraced the darkness and then we're sort of in this <laughs> yeah. limbo. We're, we're, yeah, we're like, we embrace the darkness, we're fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of the planets are not out there. And then, obviously, mm-hmm. Callus, you'll have to let us know what he ended up finding or how that experiment went. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, it's it. But that's also kind of the thing that Destiny tends to do is, hey, we lost part of the planets in the solar system to the, quote, Destiny content vault, which is fine. But also, we there's not been a mention of, like, hey, somebody go on a scouting mission. What's it look like? What happened? Nothing. So mm-hmm. I, unless, it's, unless it is out there and I don't know it, but it's just so weird that at the end of the – I'm crapping on years now. At the end of year three for Destiny 2 – is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the end of year three for Destiny 2, we're like, hey, the darkness invaded the solar system map. Here's a new director. No mention of it. That's some of those times where, as you said, the the lore and the story in Destiny is like just killing me because such mm-hmm. a big event happens. And then they're like, well, go to Europe and check out Aramis. And I'm like, what about the other big, big giant thing that just happened? Yeah. You've got to wait a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and that, that's sort of why I was saying things before about having a plan, a 12-month plan to – to resolve, you know, storylines that, that open. And you can still have these overarching ones that come through, right. but um, to keep the momentum of yeah. what they're sort of saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's it. It's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic, you know, and we, we got to see where they go with it. I do like the fact that for the first time we're getting those, um, what, what I call it? I would say like a playbook. Cause I, I felt in the past, we narratively, they wouldn't tell us, Hey, this this year we're doing this and this year, you know, this one's Witch Queen yeah. and this one's Lightfall and, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, that that's a start. And, um, yeah, it was it was definitely a surprise to me when I even heard them mention that. So I'm curious. And then the other thing I would like to know, you know, if we ever get the introduction of another alien race just to, you know, add the flavor into it. Because obviously there's a lot of stories that we've been we've already been told and we've yeah. been getting yeah, Cabal, we've getting fallen, you know, we, we've gotten, you know, Hive, it's been there. And I'm very curious, you know, if that's something that will ever be breached, what, quote, quote, unquote, the darkness race, like the, you know, all these rumors that we've heard for the years. Like, what yeah, do you think about that? I, I would love to, to have a new race added. And I think for a long time, people were waiting for it to happen and it just sort of never eventuated. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't think, I think the standard formula will be adapt and modify the models we already have, which are the mm. Cabal, Hive, Vex, mm. and Fallen. Right. <laughs> so what's the fourth one? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry. Good, good. Brain's kind of fried. It's fine. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, they do have quite a bit of flex. You know, we, we've seen Siva Fallen. We've seen right. Darkness Fallen. We've, you know, um, I would like for it to change it would definitely freshen up, just like new supers freshen up the game. Mm-hmm. Having something new to shoot would also freshen yes. up the game. Yeah. Yes, but I don't really feel like they they can do anything with 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 any of the the enemies right now and and give them whatever powers they want. They just got to make up some reason for them to have it, to have and they can change mechanics and they can do different stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I would love to see something different, but I I, I don't feel like it's going to happen um, mm-hmm. unless that that is a plan after Lightfall. Do do you think it would be more possible with the introduction of a Destiny Three? 
as opposed to the plan to continue Destiny on this path of same engine, same... Do, do you feel that might be necessary to, to facilitate that? I think um, oh, the whole... I feel like Destiny should get rid of numbers and just be Destiny, and okay. it's a live service model like World of Warcraft, and it just... It just Keeps on going, I guess. Um, okay. It might need a reset. I feel like they're pretty close to everyone being on the same page with next gen console and and mm. PC and crossplay. Like I feel like they're pretty close. It's sort of mm. just a little. I I never really felt like Destiny got out of its teenage years and knew what knew who it was, <laughs> you know, and became an adult. And like yeah, this is what we are. This is what we can produce. Right. This is what to expect. I feel mm. like they've always been. Playing, experimenting. Mm -hmm. Well, we tried this model. We tried this model, and never really found their feet. And I'm sort of mm -hmm. just waiting for them to go. You know what? This is that what you expect. This was an each season, or in fact, you know, we we can't put this out every season. You're going to get it every six months, and mm -hmm. or and that's what it is. And we've got right. heaps of loot. You get the big story plot, the big story plots on the on the Septembers. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of story throughout that, and and just sort of. I don't feel like they've got they're, – they're sort of close to their formula, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like they've, like, the confidence to do it. Yep, this is it. This, this is what we've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, know I, if that's just, like, playing on the community because the community have just got so much hope about it. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, this could be it. This could be the next. <laughs> they, they this is what they got have, it. This is, this is the one. We got it. Got uh, it. No, no, no. How about this? <laughs> no, no. No, that's – I mean, yeah. that, that's a good point because – Sunsetting is the prime example of... You read my mind. I was just about to go there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but it's such a substantial decision that had such large ramifications, mm -hmm. blowback from the community, and then to turn around on it so fast, like we talked about this yesterday and last week with Travis, it's so big that I know they're a very data-driven planning company. Obviously, they literally wrote like 10 years on the whiteboard, all that stuff. So there's planning involved. Yeah. But then, of course, it's like the execution or... They didn't expect things to go quite – however things go, as you said, it's like they're still trying to figure this stuff out. And mm -hmm. I think as you said, and I keep kind of harping on, I would rather see a bigger – kind of like you said, do an expansion whenever they release it. They can take the time now. They're not forced to be in the hall in you know September, November. Mm -hmm. Do whatever the Witch Queen expansion is, which we'll get back to in a second. And then maybe six months later, it's like this is the second piece to kind of keep the live service going. It's got a bigger chunk to it bigger amount of loot that they can put in. They've got a little more time to develop, as you said, brings a little more to the story that they already tried to get through in the first half. Mm -hmm. And then they can kind of alternate in six months, maybe to keep the live service going. But the three month model with the way the stories go, sometimes it's like, we're going here, we go straight off, come back and the, okay, we're still some of this, some of the seasons feel like kind of unnecessary tangents to fill space as opposed mm. to building towards like your forsaken narrative in the dreaming city. Right. You had season of the drifter. Right. Could not have felt like so mm. far apart. So it's like, it's, right. I like that idea of a through line of 12 months, however you do the timing, but make that story continue to build. I, I don't mind learning about other characters, but somehow mm. you got to tie it back in. But I wanted to kind of mm. get back and ask you when it comes to just this coming year, like, it's going to get delayed for Sabbath Dune. They're trying to do bigger overarching kind of arcs and narratives and things with characters. Yeah. They said, what do you, what do you, what do you want to see out of Witch Queen when it comes to that expansion? Do you, is, do you have any expectations, any characters that you want to see that you may know about that most of us probably don't? What are your hopes um, for that one? I think Sabbath Dune has pretty big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. Um, with Oryx, obviously, uh, Taken King has huge nostalgia for a lot of veteran players and probably considered one of the greatest stories combined with Raid, combined with Campaign, probably with the exception of Forsaken. That's probably no, happened. You're right. You're right. Um, at, at the very least, a conclusive story. Yeah. Um, it is hard to... Do something. I think the issue with Savathun, it's hard to do something different right. because she's obviously hive and she funk. Well, actually, maybe this is how they're doing it. You know, to kill the hive, we've got to go to the throne world, which is a whole story of taking king. It's in the throne world, it's in the dreadnought, it's the merging of realities. It's that was a raid. That's how we defeated Oryx once and for all. 
Sabathun is trying to escape the worm god through trickery, through this. So it's starting to set her up in a position where we maybe don't have to go into the throne world, or at least we go into a singularity, or we go into a wormhole, or I think they're trying to open that door and, and move a little bit away from traditional sort of hive mechanics mm-hmm. so they can play a little bit more with with the raid and with the story. So I think Sa- Sabbath, you know, in her nature could go anywhere and they've done a good job in setting that up. Yeah. Um, I do think she, it's going to have to be pretty spectacular to Pass. beat the story of Oryx and I think Ooh. that is probably going to be a pretty high expectation in the Destiny mm-hmm. community. And we've already seen how this plays out with Worm Gods uh, oh. and Strike Missions. Oh, and please don't do that. Don't, <laughs> don't do, do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Nocris. Um, so I'm this, ho- I the hope that they The soul pain. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they're very well aware of that and I hope they they just look like, you know, we've got to do justice to this. Uh, it's got to come back to the Dreaming City and the curse in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and how that's going to be resolved. Do you think we defeat her? I, uh, <sighs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Sorry to put you out there. <laughs> <laughs> like, do we want... Uh, I, I don't like... Who's left after that? Mm. Who leads a hive after that? You think about, mm. like, what things they've got in the pipeline... What? How do they? How do they keep pushing the hive, or do they put the hive on the back burner? Mm. Like maybe we do. Maybe this is the end of the maybe hive. Maybe this saga. is the end of the hive. Yeah. Maybe this is. Maybe this because well, it would like, have to be right. Because yeah. there's no there's no other See, thing with so much history in their story. Mm-hmm. They would have to restart for us to care about anything. Yeah, it seems like it. Related. Yeah, I mean yeah. we've we got the tease of Zebu Arath in season of the hunt. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be as she's one of the three sisters. I feel like she got mm. kind of a small dose for being yeah. not quite on probably the same level as the other two, but she's still mm. fairly substantial. I don't mm-hmm. know if she's going to be something in maybe season 15 to lead into Savathun, but I was like, I'm with you. It's like, as it is such a kind of one of the final major pieces on the board for the hive. Mm-hmm. I would be curious what they do with the race after. That's a fair. I never thought about like if you do defeat or like Point. what do you do with the hive? Are they still compelled Point. to do like who fills the power vacuum? So mm-hmm. what's the word yeah. you'll probably know how to say is Quaria, like the Vex yeah. hive. Who is that? Do you know what I'm Quaria. talking about? I know yeah, you do. Yeah, but Quaria. Quaria yeah. is Quaria Blade Transform. Yeah. Transform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So she was the. Um, when Crota got tricked to cutting a hole, a portal into Oryx's throne world and the Vex invaded Invaded. Oryx's throne world and he's like, oh, crap. And then Oryx came along, started taking everyone, captured Coria Blade Transform, gifted it to Savathun as part of, you know, the hive uh, mentality, you know, we love each other by killing each other. They and kill each other. <laughs> like, yeah, cool. You've given me a Vex system that's probably going to try, you know, kill me. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other law I can't remember at the moment. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that's, that's sort of been hinting, especially with Forsaken and the curse. People are going to freak out. People mm-hmm. know in the, in the comments. Let's go. Oh, that's right. Tolan says something in about Coria Blade Transform. Mm-hmm. Can't remember what it is. Chat my note. <laughs> new Rad's put it in. Yeah, New Rad. New chat. Rad's usually yeah. on top of the lore yeah. too. He's one of those mm-hmm. that's pretty into it. But it was like there's yeah. there's only as you said like I don't know if that if that could be a way to tie into like Vex for Lightfall if the darkness still plays in more. I just always wonder about some of those final pieces after Savathun because. As you said, she has probably the biggest shoes in the game to fill. So the expectations are massive. But then where it goes, that's what kind of blows me away. Savathun feels like the culmination of so much now. Mm-hmm. I still don't know too much about Marasov and what she's up to. But Savathun mm-hmm. is such a big thing. Lightfall feels like it's in the wrong place to be after that because Savathun feels like what would be a big ending to something like this. So I'm still mm-hmm. intrigued mm-hmm. to know where it all goes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. We got we got a lot of lot of chapters that we got to figure out, man. <laughs> <laughs> we do, man. We got to be respectful of time. I know our brother is uh got some things, constraints and stuff like that. So we got to be respectful, but turn it into a lore episode. <laughs> I mean, for, that wouldn't yeah. have it any other for way sure. with this man on here. So. Yeah, yeah, it was sure. an Outriders Good. lore episode. How's that? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The Outriders <laughs> lore episode. <laughs> I... Uh... Look, look, I, I say to everyone, like, because cause obviously everyone's nagging me to do Halo lore as well, right? I'm like, of course. dudes, I'm not reading two decades of lore <laughs> for a video that, you know, how, how many Halo books are there? Oh, <laughs> like, I couldn't tell you. There's probably way too many at this point. Tons. Tons. You know, like that 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 ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I've, you know, whenever I play a new game, you got to do lore on it. And I feel like. Um, mm -hmm. You know, still trying to diversify, and, and I think if I can uh, move to some other topics, it would be a, a nice, a nice change of nice for spice in my life to not spend my days reading and, and writing, <laughs> <laughs> just screaming at people and screaming at the game. So what I want to do. So outside of video games, for one last question from me, as mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they've kind of restructured Bungie a little bit, brought on like execs for. TV companies and stuff like that. What format would you like to see them take Destiny to outside of gaming? Probably not a book, but what like, would you like a Netflix series? Would you like a one-off like anime movie? Would you like live? Se like, what would you like to just see them do uh, with the stories that are out there? Destiny could easily be, uh, it's got a lot of great sci-fi components. It could easily be uh, a, a, a series. Mm. Oh, a Netflix series with without doubt. Um I'd prefer that over I feel like if it did something like anime or something, they could easily I don't know, like retcon stuff. I don't know. I feel like mm. it wouldn't be taken as seriously mm. as if they did like a, a live action mm. <laughs> part yeah, of it. That's true. Um But the thing is, it would also have the potential to be like super B grade, I feel. Because it's just like <laughs> You know, you got like it's so sci-fi. You've got like Hive and Cabal and and like just non-human characters. Like, is it? It would it be a B-grade animation, and then that would upset me. So it'd be like, I would have to be that Star Wars level oh, of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, of alien creatures that just looked freaking cool. And I mm -hmm. think that's pretty tough, man. Yeah, yeah, especially with the budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, not, they're not a Disney's level of uh, playing quite yet, I'm sure. So I was just curious no. if you had a preference to see something like on your uh, TV screen mm -hmm. at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess a lore question for you. This is um, probably one of my final ones. There's been a lot of speculation about what's going on with the Morisov and Morisov, yeah. you know, the whole thing with her. So, like, you know, what what do you think possibly could be going on? And then there's also rumors. I don't know if my boy Scream is here. He's like, she's that Savathun. Like, I've seen that going around. Like, there's a lot of Marisov uh, theories. So just right. what do you feel? And you're just guessing, you know, what, what do you feel what's going yeah, well, on with her? I mean, what it's meant to be is, I guess, that uh, Eris Morn is working with Marisov to take out Savathun is my mm -hmm. general impression. Okay. That she'll probably make a reappearance with the Witch Queen. Okay. And we'll find out what she's been doing. Um, they uh, they released a dark future law book, uh, mm. which revealed you know Eris Morn was the real witch queen uh, and mm. betrayed everyone. Um, I think that's a massive red herring. It's a bit yeah. of a, a bit of fun of it's you know fun. De De yeah. Destiny put every fan theory into that book that they could possibly squeeze in, mm. including Eris Morn being evil. So I, f mm. I feel like it was a, a bit of a fun book rather than something we take super seriously. Um, yeah. So I don't think Eris Morn's going to betray. So I think it's going down that path of, and that's what that's what she's been working out is is how to take out Savathun and focusing on that threat and yeah. uh, likelihood working with Marisolf, and that's probably all I've got. Okay. And, and and last question in reference to it, um, the connection with her and obviously now Crow, which is now, you know, a former brother now a, a, a guardian, you know, the mm -hmm. the Aldrin. So like um. Do you think they tie the knot with those two characters as far as, uh, you know, seamlessly just from a cohesion standpoint, bringing that full circle? 
Oh, they've got so much uh, narrative energy uh, with the Crow. They could do anything. And I think they've actually done a really good job with Crow going from probably one of the most hated characters to one of the characters we have the most empathy for. And that's that one was- of my moments for, for them. That I, forgot, I, was, I forgot when you asked me what yeah. a, that was, his, his, him as a character, his character development. Continue. That was yeah. one of my top stories. Yeah, I think they actually really nailed that. I think that was a hard sell. Um, and the fact they could flip an entire community to being on Crow's side with a couple of pieces of dialogue from the spider and a couple of story points, I think is pretty special. And uh, they obviously have a huge amount of plot line, a huge amount of string and rope to play with, with bringing back Mara Sov because she's, she's a bit mean. Yeah. <laughs> she's, a bit mean. she's a bit mean to her brother yeah. at the very least. Uh, and never really cared about it. So the, there's heaps of family stuff that can, um, you know, uh, tension between Marisov and Aldrin and his character. So I hope they, I hope they do do something there. I don't know what it would be, but so the theme of um, today is destiny is a story of family problems. You've got <laughs> five family brothers and sisters yes, going at sisters. it. Mother yeah. daughter in cabal. Brother mm-hmm. sister going on here. Those are the big ones I can think of. Real off the off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, families are going to mess you up. They, they, there's always going to be family drama. Yeah. But on that note, uh, I know we got kind of hitting our time window here, so we yeah. want to let you go. Um, mm-hmm. If there's anything you've got coming up for your world, as you said, videos you want to work on, stuff they can look forward to, just where they can find you, the floor is yours to let anybody who listens and finds oh, cool. this one. Um, it's all yours. Right. Um, so I'll be working on... Because I know I don't think all the last man, the, the what's it, Dead Man's Tale is all out yet. The book, Ooh, so I'm saving I mean, the that. sort of full summary for a little bit longer. So mm-hmm. next week I think I'll release that. Today I'm going to work on just a short video about Callus in case people haven't jumped yes. into that book so far. Let's just go. what what's going on with the the real Callus and uh, maybe a discussion about whether he's dead or not. A um, couple oh, hints said- in the in that. Exotic mission, mm-hmm. um, which you probably already know. It, it, it's just the first couple of entries, but p- people who haven't read it, I think, will find it interesting. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be streaming live on Twitch every day except today, <laughs> as is, is typically my day off. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you. When this podcast started, pretty pretty similar time. Like I used to wrap up around now as well. So minus three hours from now is usually when I when I head live every day. And that, that's that's it. That's it. I think uh, I'll see what other games come up to. So I'm always looking for new games to play and, and see what we can add to the channel. Fair enough, brother, man. Thank you again for taking the time. Huge fan of you, man. Huge fan of you. I love Thanks. what you do in the community. Love how you deliver your content. And I uh, like you actually expanding with the diversity of your content. It's been really, really cool. I know we didn't get to touch uh, on low UFC. I had to, had to throw it at the end, but I had, when the world was normal, I had the pleasure of having a drink with this man and shout out to Rick Kakis and Man at Arms. And we yeah. watched uh, Ben Askren lose consciousness in about two, five seconds, if you remember <laughs> uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. a moment I will never forget. You threw up yeah. your drink. I threw up. You're like, oh my God. It was a classic moment at GCX, you know, and I do miss, you know, once the world gets back to normal, being able to hang out with uh, members of the Destiny community. You were awesome. You show, showed a lot of love. So much respect to you in that. And um, yeah, man, always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having for me. Coming Appreciate through, it. For sure. For sure. Good fun. And, uh, e? uh, yeah, for you, sir. Mm-hmm. Anything to wrap oh, your piece yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't even think, talk about myself. <laughs> no, <you're, laughs> yeah, hey, I mean, um, yeah, it's like we're yeah. just celebrating the uh, island here. So. Uh, so yeah, man. First of all, I want to shout out the community that obviously – you know, this has been an extremely brutal week for me and personally, you know, and um, we're real life physically coming off of surgery and then uh, two close to dear friends passing away. And it was a lot of love. Uh, thank you all guys that sent me messages and checked on me and see how I was doing. It was it was rough, you know what I mean? But uh, we're getting through. And uh, tomorrow, uh, as Dizzy would like me to continue ILP in the tradition, so we will do that. And we will have Jason Rano from Xbox, the director, the creator of the Series X and Series S. He has agreed to still come on, and um, it's going to be fun. We're going to we're going to definitely have some fun. And again, shout, shout out to everybody who uh, came or at least uh, stopped by for the uh, live stream where we celebrated Dizzy's life, and uh, also uh, give a shout out to Nintendo Guru who uh, passed away as well. So salute to everybody in the community. Again, I felt the love. The family also expressed their uh, thanks as well. So uh, 
salute to you guys. But that's what I got going. And um, good to shout to E, man. I see you moving and shaking. He had, um, what you call it, out there on uh, Fire Team Chat. You were immortalized. Very proud. Very proud. I saw your face up there with uh, you and Paul Tassie and uh, keeping things going and holding down the fort while I've been kind of going through my thing. So salute to you. And also for you for checking on me and see how I'm doing and stuff like that. Wouldn't wouldn't have it any other way, and I'm just sorry everything had to go through recently. So, no, yeah. If you guys haven't checked that out on ILP, it was the celebration of Dizzy. Just I didn't catch all, but what I did, there's a lot of love in in that stream. So definitely go check it out. For me, uh, you guys know, still covering Destiny, still covering Outriders, getting ready for those going on. Um, but this month is going to be. I mean, I can't. I can only play the demo so much, but they keep. Tweaking things. Uh, I say that. I've already got too many hours, so I'll still keep touching on it just to stay fresh and see if there's anything else. But there's a lot of depth to that game, so I'm looking forward to pretty solid month of that in April. Mm -hmm. Other than that, for now, just kind of seeing what keeps going on the Destiny train and then probably popping into probably some random games. I'm almost done with Immortals Phoenix Rising, about to finish that one. That's been a fun, goofy game. Like, if you haven't played Assassin's Creed in a while and you're not burned out on open worlds, Immortals mm -hmm. Phoenix Rising has, like kind of cheeky, dry humor, dealing with Greek gods, and the combat's just kind of like fun and lighthearted. Don't take yeah, it too seriously. Things. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all I got. I'm Ubontis. You guys can find me everywhere. ILP, you know, Iron Lords podcast, and of course, our awesome guest, Sir Mylan Games. Thank you very much. It was our pleasure having you, the uh, the pinnacle of the lore community here. We thank yes. you for, for joining us on this one. Uh, but for everybody in this episode, we are going to go raid Gamma Trap. Very Whoa, fittingly, he's Gamma. swimming right now. So going to send the raid over there. So you guys spread so the love to Gamma nice. Trap. Uh, but for today, March 6th, episode number 139. Thank you, sir. It has been The, the Last, last word. word.